Keeping venomous reptiles is an unforgiving hobby, requiring proper training and lots of experience. One simple mistake can be the difference between life and death. death, death. Remember, the most venomous snake in the world oh, is the whoa. one that just bit you. There are no venomous snakes with training wheels. Just because you see Viper Keeper handle snakes a certain way does not mean you should try it too. Hey, Viper Keeper here. Just want to have a uh, quick uh, update. Uh, I've got some special uh, uh, videos planned uh, for the episode 2000 through 2006. Um, it's a video that I've never published before. It's a six-part video, as I said, episode 2000 through 2006. It uh, was filmed at uh, Reptile Gardens in near Rapid City, South Dakota. Uh, my friend Terry Phillip hosted me for a couple of days of uh, shooting and uh, evading uh, the pointy ends of very dangerous snakes. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Reptile Gardens is one of the largest reptile collections on the planet. Terry's been curator there for many years. Uh, we've had a long and very uh, uh, good friendship and relationship. Uh, uh, many of my snakes uh, uh, are at the uh, reptile gardens on display. Uh, he got some of my favorite animals uh, uh, because he's an amazing keeper and a good friend uh, and colleague. <clears throat> the video was shot in 2005, so we're digging it back deep into the archives uh, for this. Like I said, I've never published it before. Uh, some people purchased a copy from me, uh, all six episodes, uh, but I decided to take it off uh, the market. Um, so I'm going to do this for my Breaking 2000 uh, videos on YouTube. I've been doing this for a very long time. Uh, at Reptile Gardens you'll see species and specimens uh, that you've never seen any place else, including on my channel. There's, there's animals that Terry keeps that uh, I don't have. Um, Terry has a one of the largest collection of Australian reptiles uh, in the United States. So you'll be seeing a lot of species from Australia that you don't normally get to see. Uh, of course, unless you go back and look at the videos where I visited uh, uh, my friend Scott Epper in uh, Brisbane when I was there. Uh, so I just wanted to give you a heads up that this is coming episode 2000 through episode 2006 uh, will feature these six parts of the video, each one showing more and more dangerous snakes. These are not going to be in cages in some uh, instances, but uh, Terry pulls them out of their cage onto the floor and wrangles them while I take some video uh, and you guys get to see species that you've probably not seen before uh, on my channel. So just a quick heads up to let you know that this is coming. Um, I don't know what episode we're at, maybe uh, 1093 or so this will be. Uh, so you've got to sit through another six or seven uh, routine videos and uh, then for the following six weeks you'll get uh, this vintage video shot in 2005 uh, on location at Reptile Gardens 
and then after that I will uh, pick up uh, with the usual videos uh, again. Just wanted to give you a heads up, say hello, thank you for all the support, uh, um, especially those people uh, who have sent me donations uh, uh, for animal care, uh, for animals in particular, buy some substrate, buy some food, uh, very much appreciated. Uh, since YouTube takes, you know, most of the uh, revenue that we used to get, uh, um, that's uh, very helpful, and I can't thank uh, you people uh, enough. Especially, there's a bunch of loyal followers that, you know, always comment on the video and ask questions and interact with me. So again, uh, thanks for watching my channel. Um, you have to put up with some routine videos, but starting episode 2000, you'll get to see some really special animals that uh, haven't been uh, released on my channel uh, before. Thanks very much. Good day. This Russell's Viper is going into shed. Maybe interested in something to eat. Oh, well, sorta. No? No, that was more defensive. Just going to leave it because if she's in the mood, she's not going to eat it anyway. We'll uh, give her some water a little later. Her eyes are glossed over and uh, full uh, shed. Oh, I see you want something. <laughs> this one's always ready. Yeah. Well, they're terrible at about. Snotting up the glass. Yep. That oscillate has uh, made uh, tracks. Okay, so this will be a quick one. Question is, which end has the pointy one? Hmm. I'm not really certain. Hook from up top, please. Ah, oh, and you're in chat too. Would you like this? It's rare to see them not grabbing it instantly. Uh, yes. Well, they're in shed and they're just not interested in being bothered. Apparently. How about you? He's not in shed. He gets a rat. He's the only one that eats rats. Ah. Now, here's somebody that will absolutely want something to eat. Hi there. Big Blue, she gave birth in June. And I'm bulking her back up. And there we go. It's very rare that she doesn't uh, take a meal. Mm-hmm. She had very pretty babies. Yep. Not sure I'll breed her again. She's produced three batches of babies. That's really hard on them. So. 
Good yeah. to give them breaks. Yep. It's, it's not as hard on the, the live bears that it is on the egg bears. The egg surfaces are so rough, they really tear the heck out of their reproductive and digestive tract. Remember, snakes don't really have a separate system like humans do. Everything comes out of that same cloaca. Yeah, yep. So if you think human uh, birth is rather gross, uh, uh, other animals uh, that have a cloaca, yeah, they're, they're all uh, coming out the same chute. Uh, it's nasty and as messy as it'll be. All right, um, the last time I was in here, he grabbed a piece of substrate and not the gecko, and then when I was forced to restrain him and pluck the piece of substrate out of his mouth, he was butt hurt and did not eat. So let's see if he's interested in eating and where he's hiding. That's the problem with this guy. That's why I call him sandworm. I like the creatures from the uh, uh, Dune or that uh, science fiction program we watched the other day. Oh, tremors. Tremors. You never know where he's going to pop up, if he's going to pop up at all. All right, now we have to do some probing. Did I wake you up or are you in shed? Here, I didn't mean to bop you in the head. Oh! Alright, well I'm not going... You got the tail, but not the, the critter. No. You ripped the tail off. Alright, well, I'm not going after him because he, I'll let him figure out and see if he comes back for the rest or not. <laughs> he got um, shortchanged. Well, you know, he was grabby. And if you're grabby, sometimes you don't get what you get, or you get what you need. Okay, so next one is this remaining June-born uh, Lesser Sunda Island Pit Viper. Doesn't yet want to eat geckos. Uh, sorry, doesn't want to eat mice, but likes to eat geckos, so he didn't get anything to eat last week, so he's nice and hungry. Um, these other... These other guys, uh, well, actually, I fed the wrong one. Uh, Oops! And so, alright, we're going to be one short, but that's okay. Um, that one ate a, a mouse cake, so... Hopefully it's not going to want geckos again yeah. after that. Yeah. Alright, so it was this one. Here you go. There we go. Close that up. Hmm. And who's going to get short change? Well, certainly we're going to try these uh, Echis babies. This way I don't have to wrap my little fingers around their tiny little heads and take the chance of getting bit. So we got some very small geckos to give it a try. So let's go with the smallest one. If we can find it and not really piss it off. Hopefully it's still in there. Yeah, there it is. Oh my god, look how tiny little tiny guy. Oh, this is going to be a big meal for you. Oh, you're interested. Oh, but that's a very big meal there, Mr. Viper Keeper. Well, also a big camera lens, which might be freaking him out a bit. Alright, so we're going to leave that 
He made it. He may not even be able to fit the whole thing down. Uh, that one may need some cannula feeding for a while. That was the runt of the litter. These other guys are not terribly huge either. Now these eat small invertebrates when they're not that size. So they're like, oh, well this is a gecko, this is not a centipede or a baby scorpion. But again, I'll leave this behind and hopefully it will decide to eat it. for the last one. I think these are the, some of the smallest geckos I've got in stock. So they're just going to have to make do. It's this one, right? Yep. Oh, and this one's, we've got a shedding. The other ones didn't shed yet. Oh, we got a strike out of that Excellent. one. Excellent. Okay, first baby shedding. All right, so no real excitement here, but we'll see if they eat or not. So we'll just. Well, at least it's encouraging that it uh, right. attacked uh, it. You know, those are usually the ones that survive. Yes. Do very well. Yeah, that's usually it. What little runt of the litter may have to be cannula fed. And dumbass there. <laughs> uh, come back up yet. Yeah, we specialize in dumb snakes. Mm. Alright, so instead of two, I have one, which I'll uh, feed to one of Rocket Babies across the way. Maybe later I'll uh, move that around the cage and see if he's interested. Hey Rocket, you're in shed, huh? You're trying to soak. <laughs> 